Hey there. Today we're diving deep into the fascinating world of neurodiversity. Maybe you've heard both media and mental health professionals use this word, but never really understood it. Well, simply put, neurodiversity is the idea that people have different ways of thinking, learning, and experiencing the world. It's a way of understanding that everyone's brain is wired differently. You also want to stick around until later in the video because there will be a bonus section and I'll be teaching you a simple practical activity that you can do on your own to start getting a sense of where you fall on the neurodiversity spectrum. Welcome to our Wellness Lenses, where we talk about mental health and the journey to self-development. Without further ado, let's dive in. So here's the thing. For a long time, society has viewed anything that deviates from the so-called norm as a problem that needs to be fixed. Mental health and disabilities have been stigmatized, and people who are different have been made to feel like they don't belong. But the neurodiversity movement is here to change all of that. So, what is neurodiversity? And how does it differ from the traditional understanding of mental health and disabilities? The old model is based on the idea that there is a normal or typical way of thinking, feeling, and behaving. And anything outside of that is considered a disorder or a deficit. Neurodiversity challenges this model by recognizing that differences in brain function and wiring are natural variations of human diversity, just like differences in ethnicity, gender, or sexuality. For example, people with autism may experience the world differently than neurotypical individuals. They may be hypersensitive to certain sensory stimuli, have difficulties with social communication, or engage in repetitive behaviors. But these differences don't necessarily mean that they are broken or in need of fixing. Similarly, dyslexia is often seen as a learning disability, but it can also be a different way of processing language. Dyslexic people may have difficulties with reading, spelling, or writing, but they may also have strengths in visual spatial reasoning, creativity, or problem solving. In fact, many successful entrepreneurs, artists, and scientists have been dyslexic. Another example is ADHD, which is often characterized by hyperactivity, impulsivity, and inattention. But people with ADHD may also have strengths in multitasking, thinking outside the box, or taking risks. Now, one thing that's important to understand about neurodivergent individuals is that they don't all experience the world in the same way. Just because someone has autism, for example, doesn't mean they will have the exact same experiences as someone else with autism. It's a spectrum, which means that people can have varying levels of the condition and can be affected by it in different ways. So we need to understand that everyone's experiences with neurodivergence are unique. We can't make assumptions about someone's abilities or limitations just based on their diagnosis. So it's important to listen to and respect each person's individual experiences and needs. When we talk about neurodiversity, we're not just talking about differences in how people think or process information. We're also talking about the unique perspectives, skills, and talents that come along with those differences. So someone who's on the autism spectrum might struggle with certain social interactions or sensory processing, but they could also have an incredible ability to focus intensely on a particular task or a really creative way of looking at things. And when we recognize and appreciate those strengths, we can create a more inclusive society where everyone has something valuable to contribute. Some people might have ADHD and be really good at multitasking or thinking on their feet. Some might have dyslexia and be amazing at visual problem solving. And the list goes on. The problem is, when we embrace neurodiversity, we're not just being politically correct or nice. We're actually tapping into a whole range of skills and perspectives that can help us solve problems and create new things in ways that we might never have thought of before. Before we move on to the signs of neurodivergence, if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that like button and subscribe for more content about self-development and improving your life. It really helps our channel, and your kindness will go a long way. So what are the signs of neurodivergence? One of the most noticeable signs is difficulty in social interactions. Neurodivergent individuals might struggle with communication, understanding social cues, and making friends. They might prefer to spend time alone 
or have trouble picking up on subtle social norms. For example, some autistic individuals might have difficulty interpreting facial expressions or tone of voice, making it hard for them to understand what someone is feeling. This doesn't mean they're not empathetic. It just means they might have to rely on other cues or direct communication to understand what others are feeling. Another sign of neurodivergence is sensory sensitivity. People who are neurodivergent might experience heightened or diminished sensitivity to different types of sensory input, like sound, light, touch, taste, or smell. They might have strong reactions to certain textures or loud noises, or they might avoid certain types of food because of the way they taste or feel in their mouth. For instance, a person with ADHD might have difficulty filtering out irrelevant background noise, which can be incredibly distracting for them when trying to concentrate. Lastly, executive function difficulties are another sign of neurodivergence. People who are neurodivergent might have trouble with time management, prioritizing tasks, and following through on plans. Remember that these signs are not always clear-cut and may present differently in each individual. Also, not everyone with neurodivergence will exhibit all of these signs. If you think you might be neurodivergent, the first step is to seek a professional evaluation. A qualified healthcare professional or mental health clinician can help you determine whether you meet the criteria for a neurodivergent condition and can provide guidance on treatment options if needed. And if you do receive a diagnosis of a neurodivergent condition, learn as much as you can about it. Educating yourself on the condition can help you understand your experiences and develop strategies to manage any challenges that may arise. Additionally, connecting with others who share your neurodivergent experiences can be incredibly helpful. Online communities, support groups, and advocacy organizations can provide a sense of community and support. It's now time to share that promised bonus with you, because if you're someone who's been feeling a little different from the people around you, chances are, you are wondering if you're neurodivergent. And while there are many different tests and assessments out there that can help you figure that out, I want to share a simple activity that you can do on your own, right now, to start getting a sense of where you fall on the neurodiversity spectrum. So here's what you do. Take a piece of paper and a pen, and start writing down all the things that you do differently from the people around you. It could be something as simple as the way you organize your desk, or as complex as the way you process emotions. Whatever it is, write it down. Once you've got your list, take a step back and look at it. Do you notice any patterns? Are there any items on the list that seem to cluster together? Maybe you'll notice that you have a lot of sensory sensitivities, or that you struggle with executive functioning. Or maybe you realize that you have a unique way of thinking about things that you never really considered before. The point of this activity isn't to diagnose yourself, but it can be a really helpful starting point for exploring your own neurodiversity and figuring out what kind of support or resources might be helpful for you. So give it a try and let us know in the comments what you discover. Also, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed this session and subscribe to the channel for more helpful content on mental health. See you soon.